In this video, I'm going to go over my podcast editing workflow and some questions I have. Um, so there's some things that I'm just not really sure if I'm doing them right or if there's other things I should be doing. Um, but the main three steps that I use is I do noise reduction process, I do the single band compressor, and I do the match loudness. And that's pretty much all I do as far as editing the podcast. So I'm going to open up some files and uh, show you what I do and how I work with it. And maybe you can uh, give me some tips or tricks on what I can do differently or better. So I would come up here to uh, File, Open, and then um, I am working on this uh, one here, five things. And then, so what I've been doing recently is making an audio original. So this is the actual uh, first you know, raw audio file. And then because my understanding is that Adobe Edition is a destructive editor, I'm making a copy and putting it in the edits one so that I always can go back to the originals. And then when I'm finally done, I put my published ones in here and I haven't done this one yet. So Maybe that's not the best workflow, but that's a lot of folders to keep track of, but that's where I'm at right now. So I'm just going to jump into edits, open up this, uh, this file here. And then, so the first thing I'll do is I will zoom in and this right here, this selection, um, I will select this and do my noise, uh, capture. What do they call this thing? No, capture noise, noise reduction process. Um, so this is where I've been having basically the person record, you know, the, the talent or the person talking, um, select this. And uh, I will say when, when I search watching a, a Adobe or learning how to use Audition, I didn't understand that how to select here. I was trying to click on this and select, and that was not happening. So you do need to select in the, I don't know, in the waveform here and drag. And so I just going to take this and there's basically no sound there. We didn't have hardly any background sound at all going on, but I will take that and then I will come to effects and noise reduction restoration and then come down to noise reduction process so I will click on that and then I will click on capture noise print and it does something and like I said I'm not really sure about what all these things are or why and then I mean it has these options down here that I don't know if those were defaults or if I copied those from somebody else and then left channel I'm not sure why it would only be on the left channel but that's what it is and then I click select entire file and then I click apply and it goes through and it's supposed to get out the background noise um, and it seems to work pretty well um, from, from what I can tell it, it kind of helps clear up my audio so then I can just you know play and listen to October edition of the five whatever's being said there um, so that's kind of how I do that. And then obviously, like right now, I'm just going to, for this, I'm just going to delete the first part. I don't need any of that. And then um, there's a couple things in here where I have to like cut out some an audio and, and do an adjustment. But basically, this is the whole track. And so then I'm going to come in and there's these peaks. So in order to reduce those, I think I'm going to cut it off. 15 is pretty aggressive because it's, uh, you know, there's, a lot of it is over 15, but I'm going to try um, cutting off at 15. And what I mean by that is when I use my single band compressor, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to line up and any peaks that come above the 15, it's going to reduce those by a certain compression amount. So I think overall there's not really that much above there. And, and some of these big ones I want to get rid of here. So, um, and, and I, I'm, not like I said, I'm not really 100% sure on how this all this stuff works. I'm pretty much just copying things that I saw from lots of tutorials, especially from the uh, Curtis Judd YouTube channel. Um, so thanks to Curtis Judd for helping out with that. And um, so I am going to go to amplitude and compression and single band compressor. And actually, it was already last time I was using this, it was already set at 15. That just happened to be um, where I needed it. And then I'm going to do three to one. So my understanding with that is it's going to reduce these peaks by a ratio of three to one for any part that's above 15. So this one goes all the way up to, what is that, uh, negative seven. So that's like eight, three. So it's probably going to reduce it down to um, about, it's going to basically reduce that one. Well, it's always going to do it in thirds. Um, but I guess if it reduces it by thirds, minus 15, it'll, it's going to be, at about minus 12 when I'm done is what I'm guessing on that one, but we'll see. And then I don't really know what these are, but again, I just copied what Curtis Judd did and it seems to work. So um, I guess I'm gonna hit apply. I don't know if I have to select everything. I guess it automatically selects everything. So that did that. And then let's see here if I, can I zoom in on that one? That big peak at the end. No, I'm not doing this right. I need to, this button here will zoom in on the actual waveform here. 
and a little bit less. And so that one right about 12, like I was thinking. So I think that's pretty much what I did. And then, so then the reason for doing that is that now what I want to do is I want to use the match loudness panel over here. And so now that I have everything leveled out better, um, when I do the match loudness, it will be able to match my loudness without making those peaks like super tall. Um, and this one here is still kind of crazy. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'll probably just leave it for this one. It's probably not that big a deal. So I'm going to just to see where I'm at, I'm going to click on amplitude statistic and I'm going to scan this and then it will tell me what my loudness level is. So I'm at negative 27 LUFS and um, I want to get myself to negative 16. So I'm just going to click on the file that I'm working on here and I'm just going to drag it into this. And then all these are presets. Again, thanks Curtis Judd for showing these. And I'm going to click uh, run and it's going to kind of do its magic thing to level all that out and make it make the loudness uh, appropriate. So now, um, so basically it's increased all of the loudness to be some standard for loudness and you can see my waveforms are much taller. Um, and I'm going to zoom out on this. So you can see that I'm never hitting, I'm never peaking up here, but I'm getting pretty close. Um, so that's good. It, it's basically expanded everything, but expanded it without letting me peak. So um, I can uh, actually play. This is where it kind of makes me nervous when I watch it because if I play this, you can see down here, like I'm almost peaking all the time, but it never lets me peak. So I guess that's a feature of how the match loudness thing works is my understanding. So you can see why cutting off, compressing those larger peaks was important to before I did the match loudness. Um, so that is pretty much the only things that I know how to do for this. That was like my three-step process for editing a podcast. Um, I think a lot of people come in and they do things with the EQ. I think that maybe is under dynamics processing. And there's a lot of other, there's tons of other things you can do in here. But I really don't um, know or understand what, um, really what I'm doing with the, um, dynamics processing. So I really want to leave that alone until I can understand what's going on. Um, but I think for now, um, you know, that should be, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much my, my workflow and what I do on a podcast. So this one, I just got to make a couple edits in here and we will be all set on that one. So save and yeah, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any suggestions.